I, I'd like to introduce you to Food for Thought, which is a pilot project we're running in the School of Life Sciences, uh, which aims to get students a bit more engaged with their feedback. So just a brief outline of, of the talk, we're just going to look at uh, why, why we believe that engagement and feedback is actually a problem that we need to address. Um, I'll also give some of the, the current approaches that, that we in life sciences and others are, are taking. Um, and then I'll introduce you to the, the project itself. So I'll give you a talk through the Food for Thought template and then end with basically um, how, how things are progressing so far on the project. So why is it a problem? Well, all we need to do is look at our National Student Survey scores um, and, and studies done by the National Union of Students to know that feedback is something that students are particularly concerned about. So it's something that they want to have better feedback. Now, despite the fact that we've made great inroads, really, in, in trying to improve the, the standards of feedback that we give to students, from the student perspective, there are a number of issues that, that still come up routinely. First of all, students perceive feedback to be of variable quality and actually this is a valid perception and often that feedback is coming quite some time after they submitted the work. There's also the, the tendency for some students to see feedback as module specific. They may read the feedback for that particular module or for that particular assessment within the module but then not make any connections with any other types of feedback that they're getting from other modules. And there are some students who are more concerned about their mark than anything else. So if they've done well enough in terms of, of the mark, they don't bother looking at the feedback. From the staff perspective, the biggest complaint is, is, is really a time constraint. Staff just don't have enough time to write very detailed feedback on lots and lots of different pieces of work. There is also varying levels of commitment between colleagues. Some people uh, are very passionate about providing good quality feedback, whereas others see it as, as less of a priority. That may be cynicism based on the fact that you only need to walk into our student resource room to see piles and piles of uncollected feedback, which really indicates a total disengagement with the process. They've been emailed their mark or they've seen their mark on eVision. doesn't matter what the feedback is. And really the, the outcome of this disengagement with feedback is that students are making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And that can be very disheartening for, for, for staff who, who know that they've corrected a student on, on a certain aspect of their work and the next piece of their work has that same mistake in it. And really what, what we need to try and, and get across is that, that feedback is not a product. It's not the comments written on your sheet or typed on your sheet. It's not the screencast that you get at the end of your piece of work. Feedback, if it's going to be effective as, as part of your learning process, has to be a process. So the student has to receive the feedback. They've got to read that feedback and reflect on it how that feedback relates to that piece of work and how it might relate to future pieces of work and they have to make some sort of qualified response to that feedback. So if their feedback is telling them that they're not using the correct citation format, they need to find out what that format is and make sure that they apply that in, in future work. Some of the current approaches that people are, are taking to try and get students more involved in, in feedback as a process are things like self-assessment, which is often formative. So for example, I provide online tests that, that accompany each of my lectures. These tests have instant feedback, so the students are getting an idea of how they're doing in the course that they do. Peer review and peer marking are, are useful ways of getting students in, involved in the actual process of marking. And by, by getting involved in that process, they're, they're kind of learning the sorts of things that we're looking at. And it can actually improve their own work, even though they're, they're looking at other people's work. Similar to the ESE feedback checklist forms that, that Hannah's mentioned this morning, is actually asking students which areas of work that they actually want the most detailed feedback on. It's almost getting the students to do an appraisal of their work before they hand it in. This type of approach has limited popularity with the students because they're, they're worried about potentially identifying weak areas of their work to the person marking it. Another approach that I've seen taken is to actually require the students to make a response to the feedback as, 
an integral part of the assessment. So the students get their feedback and they then have to respond to the tutor's comments and that response counts for up to 5% of the marks awarded for the piece of work. So I'd now like to talk about the, the Food for Crop project itself that's, that we're developing in the School of Life Sciences. Now we chose to do this as a pebble pad template really to link in with the work that the students are doing in their Keele University Schools portfolios. They're getting used to, to navigating around pebble pad and doing reflections on pebble pad. So what I've done is I've, I've actually set up a, an at on the KLE called Food for Thought and put a link through to the pebble pad on, on that KLE page. And essentially the idea is that we're encouraging students to collect all of their different formats of feedback in one place as pebble pad assets and then once they get uh, a piece of feedback they're asked to complete a reflective template and make some response to that feedback. The idea is that at the end of the year they will have another template to fill in which has yet to be designed and I'm really basically summarizing their, their entire feedback provision for the year and identifying any key changes that they need to make in their work. So at this point, um, I'm going to introduce you to the template itself. I've now opened up my PebblePad account and we're going to have a look at the PebblePad template itself. So I've just opened up my resource centre. This is the template here, it's food for thought. So if we click on use, this is what the students will see as it comes up on their screen. Let's move this across. Okay, so here's a PebblePad template. And essentially it's just a series of structured questions to ask them to think more deeply about what the feedback actually is and how it's affected their learning. The first thing that we're asking the students to do is to actually just select what type of feedback it was. Was it formative or was it summative? So if I pretend to be a student here, I could select summative here. We then ask them to select the most appropriate assessment type. Um, and listed here are the main types of assessment that we use in the School of Life Sciences. So perhaps it's feedback on an essay. So we'll click here. At this point in the form, uh, the students are asked to attach copies of their feedback. The idea is that the students can collate all the different types of feedback they have as assets in their asset store in PebblePad and then link to that specific asset here. So once they've uploaded things into their asset store, they can just click this button here which says add evidence. Another window will pop up here. So we can browse for the evidence. I'll just look through my asset store and here's an, an example of feedback so I click on this, I press confirm and then I save that and so now uh, when the student shares this feedback by me, with me I can view the evidence by clicking on the rosette, I can see that they've uploaded something there. So the next part is actually getting them to, to describe the feedback and I've given them some suggestions of sorts of things that they might want to say here so things about the timeliness of the feedback. Is it generic feedback? So is it something that the whole class has got or is it something that's more personal specific to that student? What formats the feedback in? Is it handwritten? Although we've now moved to electronic feedback from, from most types of uh, feedback, things like lab reports can still be have handwritten comments on them in our schools. We've, if we've used that as an exception. And then the, the important part is actually asking them to make a response to the feedback. So they have to perhaps think about some of these questions. So did the feedback help you identify what was good and bad about your work? Are, are there clear areas that you can improve? Do you actually agree with the feedback? Sometimes students might think, well, actually, no, that's not fair. And, you know, perhaps they might want to think about approaching the member of staff to, to, to discuss that feedback. Importantly, can you relate the mark that you got to the feedback that you've been given? Are there any recurring themes? So, as I say, these are just a few questions to get them thinking about the, the things. There may, there may be other things that they, they might want to discuss as well. Then give them the opportunity to, to rate the, the quality of the feedback um, in terms of how effective it is on their learning. And they're asked to score it on a range of 1 to 5, from poor to excellent, and also given the opportunity to give some comments on how effective they might think or what sorts of improvements that potentially could be made. So an example here might be that they, they have been given basically just a, a mark for a multiple choice exam. They haven't been given back any of the answers. So whilst they know the mark, they can't actually identify where 
they've actually gone wrong and what areas of their work that they need to improve. Okay, that's the template itself. I just want to kind of update you now on where the project is, is at the moment. So the project officially started in October and at my scheduled meetings with my personal tutees, I invited them to participate in the project. Now they were told that, that it was entirely up to them whether or not they wanted to participate in the project, but actually it gave me a good chance to really discuss the importance of engaging with feedback. So I think it was a positive thing for the students, even those that haven't, haven't decided to take part in the project. About 10 students signed up for the project, that's about a third of the personal duties that I have, and of those 10, 4 have already made entries into the Pebblepad templates. One student has actually shared some of those entries with me. So I'm just going to show you an example of how that student has completed their template. This was feedback on a multiple choice test. And as you can see, basically all they were given back was their mark. The mark was returned quite quickly, but basically in terms of feedback, it was essentially just statistical averages of, of how they've done against the, the rest of the class and compared to, to last year's class average. So not really much feedback there. So there wasn't really much for the students to be able to reflect on, other than that they know that this type of assessment is not really the, their actual strength and that particular topic was something that they found difficult when revising. Students actually have been quite generous here and, and given a rating of 3 for the feedback. Had that been me, I'd probably have given that a lower score because essentially getting a mark is not really feedback at all. They, they have actually identified something key that could be done to improve the feedback, i.e. give us the test papers back so that we can find out where we've gone wrong. So I'd just like to finish up giving a few acknowledgements. Thanks specifically to the students who are participating in the project. For obvious reasons, I can't give their names here. But also thanks to the Transforming Assessment team and the Higher Education Academy who are providing some of the funding for this.